School as an instructor for academic English. Hello everyone, I'm Susanna and I teach at the Student Engagement Center at the English Language School. Student Engagement Center is an inclusive space for all international students to take extracurricular activities, take part in workshops and uh, improve their language skills. So we know that the transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online has been quite difficult for all of us. Um, we've all been struggling to try to get our students to engage in the online setting and sometimes it is a struggle for all students but especially for international students there might be different layers like language, confidence, maybe a different cultural um, uh, education system. So I think um, we've all tried to work on different uh, strategies to try to engage them and um, within the classroom and also at the Student Engagement Center. Uh, in fact, uh, recently we have been collaborating with the Faculty of Education and uh, we have received some very interesting student interviews where students in undergraduate and graduate level expressed some insecurities about their language uh, skills and as a result they were a little bit more hesitant to participate in classroom discussions. A lot of instructors are using Zoom in their courses. Now, how can they engage students on Zoom? Um, yeah, Zoom is a great tool. Um, there are a lot of built-in functions that are easy to use um, that you can use to engage your students. Um, I'm sure a lot of you use these tools already, but I think what is really important is to kind of build a culture of encouraging your students to use these tools to engage. Um, most of us think of engagement as fit, like turning on the camera, um, saying something during the class, which is great engagement. I think that's the optimum engagement that we want. However, we might want to try to ease our students into engage by using different functions like the reaction buttons, the polls, the chat boxes. And how I do this with my students is I try to make it more um, informal and uh, I model it myself. So if when a student is saying something funny, I'll you know put the laugh um, reaction on, or if they're um, doing a great job, I'll give them a thumbs up. Or I'll ask very simple questions like, oh, did you understand um, the first point? If you understand, give me a thumbs up. Or, um, oh, between uh, concept A, concept B, which one do you think is more suitable for whatever? Can you type it in the chat box? And then everyone can type in a B or A, whatever, whatever they think, um, or using a poll. Um, so I think starting easy, um, lower barrier of entry kind of questions, things like that, will encourage your students to use those functions. And once they get comfortable using those functions, um, it, it becomes a lot easier for them to start building a connection with you as an instructor and also with other students as well. As an instructor, what happens when you realize that the students are actually struggling language-wise? Are there any tools that you can use? Yeah, for sure. Zoom has another tool that's adding captions. Um, you can definitely use that to support language skill as well. Students need to, you have to realize when students are in your lecture, they're using all four skills, um, the receptive skills, which is reading and listening, and then the productive skill, which is speaking and writing. So by turning on the caption, you're supporting reading skill as they're listening to you. And also, it, they, you can also allow for them to download the transcript, and then they can read that after your lecture, which um, is very easy for you to allow and also very easy for the students to read through at their own pace as well. Another way you can support reading is um, having the students access easier material that is based on your discipline and your topic um, and also uh, so that they can build familiarity with the language that's involved with their discipline, like the vocabulary, the language chunks, the types of sentence structures that are in your in your in your discipline. Um, so, give, giving them um, suggestions to read, for example, Science Daily or with Simple Wiki English. Um, those are different websites that provide the sim similar content but at a easier level. So it's a lot easier for students to absorb and become familiar with the language as well.
if you want to support both reading and listening skills, is to give them access to websites like Text-to-Speech, where they can just copy and paste the reading from you and listen to it as well. Drag and drop your files, or type, paste, and edit text here. The last thing I would suggest to support listening is some to, to give your students some podcasts. Um, I know a lot of faculties already have podcasts um, available to um, students, and these are great ways for the students to have access to, they can speed it up, slow it down, listen to a part again. By using podcasts, you can let your students become immersed in the language of your faculty, of your discipline. Um, and so when they come to your class, they know the lingo, they know the vocabulary, and they know what it sounds like, and they know what to expect. So podcasts are a really great way. And another way to support language and uh, help the students engage a little bit more is to um, structure your lectures so there's a clear introduction, main idea, conclusion, so that every time the students come to your class, they know what to expect. I think it's very helpful to provide a glossary of the key terms and vocabularies prior to class so students can practice listening to those key terms so they know what the pronunciation is like and then they'll, when they come to your class, when you say those key terms, they know exactly what you're talking about. Um, at the end, I think it's also really important to emphasize what are some of the key takeaways for your students. If they missed it during the lecture, they can always go look it up themselves, maybe review your lecture, review your captions, um, something that they that, that you want to make sure that they understand so they're prepared for the next class. Um, and the last thing, if you're comfortable with recording your lectures and providing it to students online after the lecture, I think this is a great resource for students just to have access to your lectures and absorb that material later on um, so that they can review. By reviewing the information, the students become more confident. As a result, they might participate in the class a little bit more. You might get that uh, voice of a student who is normally quiet and invisible, and suddenly they will be a little bit more confident to speak in the class. Denise, what if students need more support uh, building their overall skills? Um, so I think this is a definite struggle, especially in larger classes. Um, the best way is to provide outside of class time for students to engage with each other in kind of a low pressure setting. This may not be feasible for many classes. So we are very lucky at the English Language School to have a support system like the Student Engagement Center that provides that support to our students. So Susanna, how does the Student Engagement Center help students build confidence outside the classroom? All right, we have a variety of workshops and activities that connect students to the North Campus and the community in Edmonton, but one of the most popular ones is the Conversation Club, where students join, uh, of course, in online environment, but interestingly, we involve alumni, alumni volunteers to come and join us, and students are able to talk in small groups, they are able to learn more about uh, different cultural backgrounds, they are able to discuss topics that are related to students' life, and uh, that way, when the students practice a little bit more in this non-threatening environment, they are able to transfer those skills later on to North Campus. So we basically are able to have the two student body, the students from International English Language School and the main campus joining together for a nice conversation and that builds their confidence. What if the students are still a little bit shy? For those students who are still a little bit shy, we use Flipgrid. Flipgrid allows students to carefully think uh, how to respond to a question and record that response later on. This tool actually takes away the pressure for the students to respond immediately. Uh, students can actually watch each other's responses as well as the instructor who can choose then to assess their response if they want to or simply use that response as part of their discussion. Another asynchronous tool that we use at the Student Engagement Center is Google Sites. Uh, we have noticed that Google Sites are more engaging for the students to use in comparison to eClass. On Google Sites, instructors can host a variety of uh, activities that Denise has already mentioned, as well as some interesting quizzes and more interactive tools that students can use. 
Another benefit of the Google Sites is that instructors can reuse the site for their other course. And I think it's a really good resource to use for students as well. I use the Google Sites to help my students create blogs where it gives me a glimpse of their creativity, um, gives me a glimpse of their personality and also their background. Um, Google Sites is a great way to help your students engage as well. If you actually have the students make the Google Sites, make a blog, um, you can actually see the students' creativity, you can see the students' engagement through the blog by asking them to post certain assignments on there, to have them add their own um, flair and culture and personality on there. It's a great way for formative assessment, it's a great way for the students to see their own progress. Um, so I think Google Sites can be used in a variety of ways. Now you may want to pick and choose the different strategies we talked about based on your teaching style or the course that you are teaching, but these small changes, they add up and they will make big changes as long as you're consistently doing this, modeling this in your classroom with your students. And for your international students who have a tendency to be quiet in the class, that extra language encouragement might result in greater class participation. Finally, if you have any students who you think might benefit from uh, the Student Engagement Center at the English Language School, please reach out. Good luck!